Wouldn't it be grand if you could repurpose some old floorboards into something to decorate your home with? Hello and thanks for joining me for this video. My name's Jamie and today I'm going to show you how I turned some beautiful old floorboards into a stunning picture frame to house some of my favourite artwork. If you find at the end of the video that you liked it or you learned something new, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. It really means a lot to me. But for now, let's start building. Very excited to get this project started. These are two artworks from Ten Hundred on the left and Deadbeat Hero on the right. A collaboration they did in Vienna, Austria a few years back. And they've been in IKEA frames in my apartment in Austria for just as long. So very excited to get them into a proper frame. Here I'm using a mat cutter with a blade set at 45 degrees and it'll give me a 45 degree bevel in this white core mat board. I'm just lining it all up and cutting to size. I keep old hardwood up in the rafters of the workshop and this specifically is spotted gum flooring. Spotted gum is a beautiful native Australian hardwood. So I'm pulling down a couple of pieces here so that I can match up the colours as best as possible. Then over to the miter saw to cut it down to a bit more of a manageable length. And looking forward to putting this miter saw in its new home when I finish my workshop renovations. Now the easiest way to make a picture frame is to use a table saw or a router to cut a rebate or a rabbit on the inside edge of the frame. And the easiest way to do that is to pass your boards through the table saw once like this and then once like this. Now this flooring has a tongue and groove profile which means the tongue slots into the groove and it keeps all the boards aligned with each other. So I need to make two cuts, one to take off the tongue and one to take off half the groove on the other side. And that'll give me a profile that matches the original picture. So I'm setting up the fence on the table saw so that I can cut off the tongue side first. Now this gives me a clean edge that I can use up against the fence to cut off the bottom half of the groove. Now I get to introduce the star of this episode and this is my picture framing sled. The benefit of this sled is that you only need to know the dimensions of the artwork or the inner dimensions of the frame and you can set this 45 degree stop block and it'll do all the work for you. Measuring the first cut's not essential. All you need to do is cut the first one at a 45 degree angle. Then you spin your piece around, make sure your rebate is flush up against the ruler and then slide the just cut end down to the 45 degree block. Hold that piece tight, cut off your end piece and you'll have perfectly repeatable cuts. I've taken my inspiration for this sled from Dave Picciuto and Michael Alm, uh, especially Michael Alm. If you want to make one for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below and you can go and have a look at Michael's website, see how he makes it on the video and you can download the plans if that's what you want to do as well. Here I'm just checking the layout to see which grains match the best and then once I'm happy with it, I flip them over and mark them so I don't mess it up later on. And now I bring in my band clamp. This one time, a band clamp? No, band clamp, and I find them really useful on projects like this. I'm using Type Bond 3 here only because that's what I've got in the bottle at the moment. Then I use my glue spreading tool to spread glue on the miter cuts, and then I use the band clamp to tighten it all together. Measure diagonally to check square. Then I use a damp cloth to clean up the glue squeeze out. After the glue dries, I tear away the brown paper and then use my chisel to clean up the joints. This is so satisfying. Now end grain joints are not the strongest, so I use another one of Michael Alm's jigs here. This is the spline jig to add splines to give the joints a little bit more strength. 
So I'm passing it through the blade for the first time, then setting the depth of the splines that I'm looking for. Here I clamp the frame to the backboard and pass it over the blade to cut the slot and leave my hand there so you can't see what I'm doing. Then it's just a case of rinse and repeat and use the clamps to keep everything square, safe and lined up. Here I'm passing an old hardwood draw front through the table saw to cut a spline about the thickness that I want. A little bit thicker than I'm actually after. Very excited to enter Sandman for the first time in this video. Never, never and with a little trial and error, I can sand it down to fit the spline perfectly in the slot. Marking the size needed for the splines. And then cutting them out on the bandsaw. A little bit of glue on both sides of the spline, then just push it into the slot. Now it's really time to enter Sandman. To never, never land. And if you too love sanding and want one of these Enter Sandman t-shirts, I'll leave links for them in the description below. I sanded all the front and back sides at 180 grit sandpaper, then sprayed some water to raise the grain and re-sanded at 240 grit. Now because this is a unique project, because these artists are graffiti artists, and because I've got a laser, I'm going to burn the artist tags into the wood directly below each of their pieces. No offence or copyright intended here, and this is only for my personal collection. After a few hours of drying time and laser time, I cut away most of the excess of the splines with my Dazuki saw. Then I use a mini block plane to flush down all the splines before entering Sandman again to sand up all the edges. Now I have about five minutes of footage of me trying to open this tin of finish uh, to no avail. In the end I went with a drill and strained the oil to get rid of the metal shavings. But, as always, it was worth the wait. This is a Danish oil that I applied liberally and let it soak in before using a lot of elbow grease to remove the excess and a lot more elbow grease to buff it up to final sheen. Now look at the beautiful grain pattern on this spotted gum. I picked this broken picture frame up off Facebook Marketplace, uh, but it was only the corner that was broken. I didn't need the entire piece. So I decided to cut it down to size. This is a very cheap glass cutter or glass scorer and I've never done this before. And to be honest, my first go wasn't very successful. But after learning you only need to score once, this one went like a charm. A spot of window cleaner getting it ready for its frame. Then I remembered I needed to cut the backing board. So using some 3mm MDF, cut down to size. Here I'm hinging the artwork to the mat board with some acid-free tape. And I'm only sticking it to the top so that the print doesn't buckle over time. First look in its mat board, in goes the glass, in goes the print, in goes the backing board. Now I got this point driver off eBay and I highly recommend it if you're doing lots of picture frames, but you can also use small nails or tacks to do the same job. Reload. Now let's see what it looks like. 
But seriously, now to hang it. Now this is a surprisingly heavy frame, so I'm using an aluminium French cleat system here to give me the most peace of mind. This piece gets attached to the back of the frame, and after sticking some rubber feet on the bottom to keep it away from the wall, you add the other half of the cleat directly to the wall. And this specific model comes complete with a mini spirit level, making the job a little bit easier. Drilling into fiberboard and I realise I'm about to make a mess. So an envelope and some blue tape save the day. I clamp it down with hollow wall inserts and a screw through the stud. Make sure it's level, sturdy, and it's good to hang. And there we go, perfect place to hang it. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed watching this project as much as I did making it. If you have any questions about how I did anything specifically, or if you've got some feedback or comments on how I can do it better in the future, just leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Now, I'll leave you with some beauty shots of the frame in its forever home. Thanks for watching. Yeah.